Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vandana Gavande from Sehagad Institute of Pharmacy, Pune. Welcome to my YouTube channel and today let's have a quick revision of few molecular rearrangements which are mentioned in PCI syllabus for second year B-Farm that is POC3 subjects. Also, this video will be helpful for those students who are preparing for GPAC. There are total 8 rearrangements which are mentioned in the syllabus. Pinacol Pinacolun, Hoffman, Schmidt, Beerwilliger, Dakin Oxidation, Beckman, Benzylic Acid and Wolf rearrangement. So, let's see them one by one. In case of Pinacol Pinacolun rearrangement, reactant is a vicinal diol. A diol means a compound containing two hydroxy groups. Vicinal means these two hydroxy groups are attached to the carbons which are near to each other or adjacent to each other. Such a diol which is containing two hydroxy groups on the same carbon atom is called as geminal diol. But in pinacol pinacolone rearrangement, a vicinal diol reacts with any strong acid to form a ketone. You can observe out of the two hydroxy groups, one hydroxy group gets protonated and removed in the form of water while other hydroxy group loses a proton to get converted into a ketone. And rearrangement is migration of any of this R group. Now this general reaction is applicable when all of these R groups are equivalent or same. If they are different, then there are different factors which will decide as to which R group will migrate, which OH will get removed as water and which OH will get converted into ketone. There are factors like steric hindrance, migratory aptitude of these R groups and stability of the carbonium ion. Next, we have Hoffman rearrangement. In Hoffman rearrangement, reactant is a carboxylic amide. Now this carboxylic amide reacts with alkaline bromine or sodium hypobromide to get converted into a primary amine. This rearrangement involves loss of carbonyl carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. So the product obtained is having one carbon less than the reactant. So this is also called as Hoffman degradation. This rearrangement involves formation of uh, important intermediates like isocyanate, n-bromamide and bromonitrine. All these intermediates have been isolated to prove or give evidence to the mechanism of Hoffman rearrangement. Next is a Schmidt rearrangement. In the Schmidt rearrangement, it is analogous to the Hoffman rearrangement, but the reactant is carboxylic acid. So this carboxylic acid reacts with hydrazoic acid, HN3 in presence of another strong acid to give us primary amine. In fact, Schmidt rearrangement is a modification or Hoffman related rearrangement because it also involves formation of isocyanate and product obtained is amine. Now this reagent hydrazoic acid contains three nitrogens. Out of these three nitrogens, two nitrogens get removed in the form of a gas and one nitrogen remains with the reactant. It acts as a source of nitrogen to form primary amine. There are two other rearrangements called as Lawson and Curtius rearrangement, they also are considered as Hoffman related rearrangements because they form isocyanate and later on form primary amine. In case of Beerwilliger oxidation, reactant is a ketone. Now this ketone reacts with either peroxy acid or per acid or hydrogen peroxide and this reagent donates one oxygen to the ketone to form ester. Per acid is a carboxylic acid containing additional oxygen. 
A regular carboxylic acid contains two oxygens. Formula is RCOOH. Per acid contains three oxygens. This extra oxygen is donated during the rearrangement to the ketone to form ester. Suppose we are using per acetic acid. It means it is CH3 C triple O H. So this per acetic acid will donate one oxygen and acetic acid will get formed as a byproduct. In decane oxidation, this is applicable to aromatic compounds which are containing either aldehyde or ketone along with a substitution of either hydroxy group or amino group at ortho or para position. Such a substituted aromatic aldehyde or ketone when reacts with alkaline peroxide, it undergoes oxidation wherein there is a replacement of this carbonyl group with the hydroxy group. So polyhydroxy compounds are obtained. Example of this reaction is uh, vanillin giving us pyrogalol. Now uh, this carbonyl group is getting replaced with the hydroxy group and R group present out here liberates in the form of acid. So if the reaction is aldehyde wherein R is H, formic acid will be formed as a byproduct wherein if the reactant is a ketone for example if R is CH3 then acetic acid will get formed as a byproduct. In case of Beckman rearrangement this is applicable to oxymes which are nothing but a functional group containing carbon double bond N along with a hydroxyl group. Such oxymes are obtained from the ketones. Ketones when treated with hydroxylamine hydrochloride form oxymes. Now these oxymes contain hydroxyl group either on the right hand side or on the left hand side. And during reaction for getting the amide there is migration of the R group which is opposite to this hydroxy group. So in this case R1 is opposite to the OH because the reaction is carried out in the acidic condition. There is protonation of hydroxyl group. OH group as starts leaving the compound R1 group starts migrating. If OH group is attached on the left hand side on a two dimensional structure then R2 in that case will migrate. So in the product you will observe that R1 group which was initially attached to the carbon now it is attached to the nitrogen and later on carbon gets hydrolyzed with water to form a alcohol first and then ketoenol tautomerism gives us amide. In benzylic acid rearrangement reactant is a diketone. So such diketone containing two R groups when it is treated with the alkaline condition it forms hydroxy acid. As you can observe there were two ketone groups containing one R group each. One ketone group is getting converted as a carboxylic acid while another, carb while another carbonyl group is getting converted into a hydroxy group and the carbon which is bearing hydroxy group now has both the R groups. In case of Wolf rearrangement we have a reactant called as a diazo ketone. Diazo means two nitrogens. So we have a ketone and its adjacent carbon atom contains two nitrogens. When such a diazo ketone undergoes Wolf rearrangement in presence of light or silver oxide, they get converted into a ketene. Ketene is a combination of ketone and alkene. This point depicts a central carbon which is attached with a double bond on one side with oxygen and double bond on another side with a carbon. Such ketenes are further allowed to undergo various types of reactions to form different products. But Wolf rearrangement here involves conversion of a diazoketone in presence of silver oxide or light to form a ketene. Now let us compare all these rearrangements with respect to the catalyst used. 
there are four rearrangements which involve acid as a catalyst so there is pinacol pinacolum beckman schmidt rearrangement and bayer willinger oxidation some form of acid is used wolf rearrangement takes place in presence of light so somewhat neutral condition there are three rearrangements which occur in presence of base benzoic acid dakin oxidation and hoffman rearrangement requires alkaline conditions there is also another important thing to be observed that in all these products there are plenty of carbonyl functional groups involved either as a reactant or as a product some carbonyl functionality is involved for example in pinacol pinacolum rearrangement the product is carbonyl and it is a ketone in beckman rearrangement again carbonyl group is a product and it is amide in schmidt rearrangement carbonyl functional group is a reactant and it is acid in bayer willinger oxidation a reactant is ketone product is ester both carbonyl functional groups in wolf rearrangement again reactant is a ketone product is a ketene both functional groups as carbonyl in benzoic rearrangement benzoic acid rearrangement also we have a reactant diketone and product as acid in dakin oxidation reactant is ketone or aldehyde in hoffman rearrangement reactant is amide so you can observe in case of pinacol pinacolum and beckman rearrangement products are carbonyl functional groups in dakin oxidation hoffman rearrangement and schmidt rearrangement reactant is carbonyl functional group whereas in bayer willinger oxidation wolf rearrangement benzoic acid rearrangement reactant as well as product both are containing carbonyl functional groups now to quickly revise all the reactions which are learned we can place ketone at the center because this was the mostly involved functional group in all of these reactions so from this ketone we can have ketene via wolf rearrangement on the other side ketene ketones can be converted into ester via bayer willinger oxidation we can obtain ketones from alcohol that is a diol via pinacol pinacolum rearrangement or we can convert ketone or aldehyde into hydroxy compound via dakin oxidation coming to the left hand side ketones can be converted into acids via benzoic acid rearrangement and ketones can be converted into amides not directly but first converting into oxime and then oximes can be rearranged to form amide via beckman rearrangement now this amides can be easily converted into amines via hoffman rearrangement and acids can also be converted into amines via hoffman related rearrangement that is schmidt rearrangement this was just overview and revision of all of these rearrangements which are there in the syb farm syllabus in the upcoming lectures we will cover details about each rearrangement with respect to the mechanism evidences stereochemistry applications that time these rearrangements will be more clear if you find this video useful please like and share so that it reaches to the maximum number of students you can also subscribe my channel in order to get future updates about the videos as well as to participate in the live sessions thank you